Hi, my name is Juan Orlandini. I'm a principal architect at Datalink. And today I'd like to discuss with you what's driving hybrid IT clouds and how to present those within your organization. But first, let's take a look at what is driving this change in IT organizations. There's an unprecedented demand uh, from IT to deliver speed to market. There's a high dependency on IT for those services that we now sell to our customers. And there's a major change in how we consume resources, including things such as mobile devices. In addition to that, there's a wide variety of infrastructure sourcing options. Many customers can choose to continue down the path of the traditional data center, which includes things such as the virtual servers or physical servers. There's a choice also to go to a hyperscaler, such as AWS or an Azure. Another choice is to use a hosted infrastructure provider, something like a QTS or a Peak 10. And there's even a choice that many customers are making now to go down an internal OPEX model where you're changing how you're financing your consumption of your IT. All of this is drive, uh, changing how infrastructure is sourced and delivered to the business. Let's take a look at what that really looks like from an end user consumer. The folks in the green on this slide are your internal lines of businesses. They might be consuming resources in your private cloud. So they could be using both physical servers or something that's hypervisor based. So think like a VMware or Hyper-V based cloud, or it could be other hypervisors that are coming to the market. They could also be consuming software as a service models, something like an ADP, a Salesforce, or a ServiceNow. And for many use cases, the software as a service model is actually something that you should be considering. They could also be consuming resources in a public cloud, something like a VMware or Amazon AWS or Azure cloud. And for many workloads, especially those that are highly elastic or seasonal in nature, that they might actually belong best in there. And they, many workloads are actually very difficult to implement in a private cloud, especially when the consumption or usage is unknown. What we've really been doing is building hybrid clouds, and what we haven't had is translation layer to help end user communities understand which uh, cloud to use at what time and for what cost models. And that's really what an IT as a service portal does for you. If we help you implement an IT as a service portal, what we're really doing is help you create a brokering service for you to your consumers. Become the broker of these services to your users. Cisco is helping deliver this through a set of tools. Cisco Prime Services Catalog is an overriding presentation layer that helps present the catalog that might be being implemented and managing by two different tools. Cisco UCS Director is a tool that helps you automate and orchestrate a self-hosted infrastructure, both in physical and virtual nature. InterCloud is a tool to help you both provision, manage, and migrate services from a public cloud to a private cloud and back again. Let's take a look at how these look. So here we are, we logged into Datalink Labs, and we have a Prime Services Catalog instance running. And in here, we're gonna jump into the Cloud Services platform. Uh, what you're seeing here is that we have the option of selecting from a catalog that's both in the public cloud and in the private cloud. Let's select something from the private cloud, just to see what that looks like. And in here, we're going to provision a Red Hat Linux in what we call the E1 environment, which is Datalink Lab demo environment. And I'm going to make some choices over here around the amount of CPU, RAM, and storage, and even uh, lease days. All of these things are highly configurable and it's part of the build out of the portal and it'll be driven by the business requirements. If I submit this, uh, you'll see that there's an order number 270. And what this has done is actually kicked off a request into UCS Director. And what we're going to do is uh, dive into UCS Director, refresh UCS Director to see what's going on in here. And in a few moments, what we'll see is that request pop up. And what you're seeing here is that request. And it's running through a workflow. We don't have time today to show you what that workflow looks like, but this could be a wide variety of user configurable, business driven requirements around both authorization, provisioning, allocation, and location selection. Let's go back to Prime Services Catalog and take a look at another use case. So back again to the cloud computing services, and let's order something from Amazon AWS. So I'm gonna select order from there. And in there, we can select which cloud we're gonna run this on. And you have a wide variety of choices. And we're gonna to continue to select AWS. We're gonna add it to our cart. And you can see over here that it's ready to be ordered from our cart. We don't have it configured for this, but there's an option to select how much this costs to either show or shame back a user into what they're gonna be consuming from the cloud. When we place this order, we can then jump into the Amazon console and over here in a few moments, you will see that uh, a request is gonna pop up 
and it's going to show us our request being provisioned in AWS. So what we're gonna see here is that our request uh, for our instance is being provisioned on AWS. We're not gonna wait for this to be provisioned because this can take quite a while. Let's jump back into Cisco Prime Services Catalog and take a look at how we can move our VMs from a public cloud to a private cloud. What you see here is a list of all of the cloud instances that are running. Let's select one that is on the public cloud and you can see that by uh, this cloud icon over here. And what you have a number of options over here and we can do is a migrate VM to enterprise. What that is actually telling us is asking intercloud is to move it from a public cloud to the private cloud. And we can even select which physical host to store it in, what kind of storage to put it in. And we have the option to remove the source VM or make a copy of it in our local private cloud. If I submit this, we've created as a request to migrate that VM to the local enterprise. And to see that in action, let's jump it over to the intercloud fabric and see that our request has already been established and that it's running through the workflow to move that stuff from uh, the AWS cloud over to our local cloud as we've requested. This can take quite a while, so we're not gonna wait for that. What you've seen in this demo is the ability to present a catalog, request resources from a private cloud, a public cloud, and the ability to migrate those resources from one cloud to the other. Today, we showed you some tools to implement IT as a service. What we find at Datalink is that selecting the tool is only one of the many challenges that organizations face. We at Datalink have developed a number of tools and methodologies to implement IT as a service. Let us help you select which tools, which services, and how to deliver those within your organization. Please visit us at www.datalink.com. Thank you.